Hey everyone, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up Logic's Step Sequencer so that you can use it with many of the electronic and acoustic drum kits in Native Instruments Contact. So here I'm using the new Contact 7, but this should work for just about any version of Contact. The thing is, if you just use Logic Drum Machine Designer kits, they're already pre-programmed to work with the Step Sequencer. All of your drum samples and pads already show up here as rows in the step sequencer. But if you use third-party kits from Contact, there are a couple extra steps you have to do, but it's not terribly involved, and it's actually pretty easy to set up. This technique should work for most drum kits in Contact, including 40's very own drums, which is a brand new drum instrument in Complete 14. This should work with any of the Abbey Road drummers, so 50s drummer, 60s drummer, 70s drummer, 80s drummer, modern drummer, and vintage drummer. This should also work with the Butch Vig drums. This will work with Drum Lab. And this will also work with Empire Breaks, which is another brand new instrument in Complete 14. Now, technically speaking, this technique should also work for any third-party drum kit that uses the GM or General MIDI drum kit note order which starts with the kick on C1. But your mileage may vary depending on how the drum kit is set up. So for this, I'm gonna use the 40's very own drums drum kit, and I'm gonna use the 312 basement preset. And you can see here in the instrument, there are 16 pads, one pad for each drum sound. So the goal here is we want to create a row in the step sequencer for each of these drum pads. So let's go ahead and do that. So the first thing I'm going to do is right click or control click here in the tracks area and create a new pattern region. Then I'm going to click right here and this will show your patterns and it also shows your pattern templates. And you're going to select the chromatic two octave template. Now most of these drum kits only have 16 sounds. So you don't need two full octaves of sounds. But one thing you want to double check and make sure of here is you wanna make sure that the bottom note is on C1. If not, you're gonna to wanna to hold Option and then press up or down on your arrow keys to make sure that this bottom note is C1. That's the bottom note of the general MIDI drum kit, which is typically the kick drum. You can also adjust the octave if you hold Shift Option up or down. So if this is up on C3, you can move that down to the correct octave. Now, most of these drum kits only have 16 voices or 16 notes, so you only need to have rows in the step sequencer up to D sharp two. In most cases, you can actually just delete all of the rows above D sharp two, but just be aware that some of the acoustic drum kits will indeed have notes above D sharp two. So what I'm gonna do for this kit is I'm gonna delete all of the top rows above D sharp two just by selecting the row and pressing delete on your keyboard. Now to test this out, you can just type in notes one step for each pitch in the step sequencer. And just for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna change this to a quarter note for now. And if I go back into contact and open up the 40 zone drum kit and play this pattern, you'll see that each row in the step sequencer corresponds to a pad in the drum kit. So now that I've got the step sequencer set up properly, I can just build my drum pattern and program my beats just like I normally would in the step sequencer. So I can use all of my note entry methods and edit modes in the step sequencer that I love, including the note repeat function, which is really super helpful for creating trap style and more rapid rhythms. You can also add some swing to this. I'm just gonna click on this I button here. Let's add just a touch of swing, just to give it a little bit more of a swung groove, not really like a noticeable 
swing, but just like a gentle swing. And now I'm able to take full advantage of my contact drum kits without having to rely on any of the preset patterns in these contact drum kits. Now, if you wanna take this a step further, this is a completely optional step. You can rename your rows, reorder the rows, colorize the rows, and you can also save this as a template for later. It, this is particularly helpful if you have a drum kit that you use all the time, like I really love the 312 basement kit. So if I wanna reuse this you know, for later and I wanna have something that's already set up for me, this can be really helpful. So you do a lot of work up front, but then it helps you later where you, you can just pull up a template for this kit and you're ready to go. So off screen, I already renamed all of the rows with the corresponding drum name, except for the very top one here on D-sharp two. This is a shaker. So I'm just gonna right click on this or control click and select edit row name, and I'll just call this shaker. So that's how you rename rows. And then you can organize these by like instruments, like by similar instruments. So I've got kick, sub bass, clap, rim, tap. Let's pull the snare down here. Let's pull the distorted snare down here. Let's put the hi-hats together. I have this hi-hat closed, hi-hat chirp, and then I have a cymbal up here. So let's, let's actually drag these up by the cymbal here. Let's pull the shaker down by the hi-hats. And then let's pull these effects. I get this laser effect, a noise effect. Then I have a distorted high and low tom. Yeah, so I have high tom, low tom, distorted tom. And I think that's okay. I like that note order or that row order. And then if you want to take this, again, a step further, you can colorize each of the rows. So to do this, you just go to view and you select show row colors. And then you can just simply set the color for each row. So maybe for my kicks, I'll go with this like orange color, my kick and sub bass. And then each of my claps and snares, maybe I'll go with this yellowish green color. And the one thing that's a little tricky about this is you can't select multiple rows at once. So that does kind of make it a little annoying, but like I said, once you do this once, you never have to set it up again. Okay, so I've renamed all the rows, reordered the rows, and colorized the rows. Now let's save this as a template. So what I'm gonna do at this point is go back to the patterns and templates by clicking here. And then what you're gonna do is click right here, turn off use project key, because that'll mess up the notes. I don't think it matters if you select this when you save your template, but it does matter when you select a template because if you use your project key, it's only gonna load up the pitches that are in your project key. For drums, we want to ignore the project key because there's not specific pitches for each note in the drum kit. And then select save template and then give this a name. I'm gonna call this contact 40s 312 basement kit. And this is another preset in here I don't want, so I'll just delete that. And now, anytime I want to load up this preset and start working with it, all I have to do is right-click or control-click, go to Create Pattern Region, go into my User Presets, go to Templates, and then select that Contact 40s kit, and every single note is already loaded up and ready for me to go. So that's how you can set up Logic's Step Sequencer for use with contact drum instruments. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.